that's about it, boys. This is about all that we get on the on the on fucking trending. Cool, man. This is billionaires' row. Holy shit! What is that? Buildings on social media. They're a stretch of homes in New York City that only the world's richest people can afford to live in. Billionaires Row here in New York City set off a super slender skyscraper revolution. Today, those towers are an astounding display of wealth, prestige, and engineering firsts. But they're also kind of empty. Back on the ground, Wait, finding chat, an apartment chat, for us. Non chat, I'm just all the things that they're, they're, they're just selling. Is, well, take it from a New Yorker. New York City housing is a scam. It is a scam, 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 scam. Woo! Three years ago this very week, we it's released like a video called The Rise and Rise of New York's Billionaire's Row. But now we want to look at its legacy. How did it come about? Why are so many uh, of those apartments guys, still guys, I'm the DJ, don't get Park Tower and 53W53 both have setbacks that help to break up strong aircraft. Chat, chat, didn't we get a tour of this house? The one that's in here? That one? ...and reduce the overall wind load acting on the building. And over yeah, at Fort right, we did. Park Avenue, engineers left out the glass on the mechanical floors to let the wind flow through the structure. Of course, we do have to acknowledge some of the issues that have cropped up now that construction's finished. Residents yeah. of 432 Park Avenue sued the developers for a series of construction issues, including flooding, power outages, faulty elevators, and a noise caused by the building swaying in the wind. We Wait, reached no out to CIM swing group the wind. for comment on this lawsuit, but no one's come back to us. Huh? Now, there's a logic to the super slender tower. The taller you build, the more value you can squeeze out of that small plot of land that you were able to find on Manhattan Island. But these towers have even fewer units than similar buildings. Just take 111 West 57th Street. It has 60 units across 85 stories. Now compare that to the Trump World Tower built 20 years earlier, and you'll see that uh -huh. it has 376 units over 90 stories. To make the construction of a super slender tower worth it, you have to make those units really, really, really expensive. And that's where realtors like Ryan Serhan come in. I caught up with Ryan at the offices of Serhant, his luxury real estate firm based here in Manhattan. That must be the biggest scam ever. Take me to the world of Billionaires Row. What's it like and how is it different to other luxury Look real estate? Look at this guy. Yo, it's him. Dude, it's the guy, Row dude. It's a pretty global demographic. So there's a lot of pied a terre, so part time owners, there's a lot of investor owners. You know, we're selling the penthouse right now, 432 Park, for $100 million. It's the guy, guy. Million dollars US. Wait, what? The owner's never been there. And it's an investment, you know, it's an asset. It's like owning, you know, a Picasso. New York City had status symbol projects prior to Billionaire's Row, but never like it does now. Before you'd say, hey, where do you live? 41 East 66th Street. You'd say, cool, where's that? Now you can say, where do you live? 432? Ah, it's a brand, right? It's like a Birkin bag. Where do you live? 157, where do you live? 111, where do you live? 220. You don't even have to say where it is. You just say the number. Uh, do people even, I don't think anybody does that. Does it, does it even, does it like, do, I don't think so. Just behind me over there are the massive cast iron testicles of the Wall Street bull. Now, they represent money, and of course, none of this would be possible without money. Loads <laughs> and loads and up. loads of money. So much money, in fact, that it's actually helping transform housing from its most basic function of providing shelter into a lucrative investment strategy. Now, to be clear, home ownership's always been one of the best ways to build wealth. Wait, guys, right, right, so, so, so they built actual dogs on purpose, and some people actually bought it, but they don't care about it. And that they opportunity an investment. hasn't been made equal to this guy gives a fuck if it's an investment or not. Billionaire's yeah. Row takes yeah, the money out of it, right? a whole new level, and has essentially created an entirely new asset class of luxury real estate. That's partly because there's simply a lot more money to go around. The amount of money being invested around the world has grown massively, creating what some researchers call a giant pool of cash. But alongside this explosion of global wealth, wealth inequality has grown too. A smaller slice of people now control a bigger share of yeah. the world's money. Wait, and that means wait, 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 guys, guys. If, the, if there's more money and there's more problem, more homelessness or whatever, and people people can barely have like like living wages, that means that that that, that the rich is getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. Means the people at the top have bigger and bigger bank accounts. One place to put some of that money? Well, luxury real estate, like the units on Billionaire's Row. 
and this um, is historically unprecedented. Guys, 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 stop saying you. Like, I'm making you do it then, motherfucker. Motherfucker. You subscribe, motherfucker. I, I, motherfucker. I'm just watching videos and shit, man. Chill, dude. Motherfucker. Motherfucker. I got to give up. The amount of very wealthy people with that money coming into the built environment, it mutates the built environment. It mutates architecture. Matthew. Dude, dude. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Souls has thought a lot about this. In fact, he wrote a whole book on how wealth is reshaping our buildings. Architecture is under a tremendous amount of pressure to satisfy the investment kind of absorption role. And that's where something like Billionaire's Row comes into being. To really understand why our buildings are changing shape, it's helpful to get to grips with a financial concept called liquidity. Stick with us and Billionaire's Row will start to make a lot more sense. So all no, it doesn't. assets have varying degrees of liquidity. You can think of everything that is an asset as existing somewhere on a liquidity spectrum. And at one end of the spectrum is the most liquid asset of all. That is cash. One US dollar bill is exactly the same as every other one US dollar bill. You can hand Which it off I, I'm super like, This is interesting, easily. actually. At the very Wait, other end I'm learning of the liquidity now. spectrum is a physical real being, estate, a, real estate, a okay, piece sure. of architecture often represented as a single family home oh, yeah. with a pit. Because it can't move, it's stuck in place, right? It's physical. Just roof. Along that spectrum, you have things like artwork and stocks in companies like Tesla or Google. So my argument is that the logics and practices of finance capitalism is to transform buildings in such a way that they move down the liquidity spectrum to become more like a stock, more like cash. Oh, more like cash. Hey, chat, hey, chat, guys, guys. I, I want your car. Here's, here's, here's my house, okay? And here's my cottage. You're taking take my name, and this is liquid. What? That's, that's, so that's, billionaire's I'm right. confused. 111 West 57th is an incredibly tall building, get it. but it has a very small number of units in it. All the units are either one entire floor. Yo, 32 gets its subs. You're nuts. Hey, Cristiano, 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 Cristiano Ronaldo, man. What's up, man? First of all, dude. Or, or a unit that spans two floors. Gone is the hallway. You know, you're not going to smell the neighbor's cooking. Maybe it's a pleasant smell. Maybe it's not. But that's what social life, social life in the city is all about. Gone are all the possibilities for that. Now, not being able to smell your neighbor's dinner sounds kind of nice, but this not... concept of housing sliding closer and closer to something like cash on that liquidity scale. What does this all mean? Okay, the I'll give this a video. That, 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 that was kind of ed ed educative. That's it. It's 65.6. Hold up. The IBO estimated that exemption will cost the city $65.6 million. I guess, I guess I'll give it the rest. I'll give it the rest. That, that was fun, though. That was educative. That was nice. I enjoyed it. Can you do those? That was cool. Guys, look, guys, look. Chat, what was it that we watched that had this? That had this thing? <laughs>